Okay, today we're going to do something called strong induction. So I want to remind you of um, mathematical induction, which you are very familiar with by now. We've done two lectures on it. But let's just remind ourselves, because I would like to compare and contrast this with this new thing called strong induction. So I'm going to write here, principle of mathematical induction. Uh, let me write that on the next line down so I don't use up all my space. Okay. So the principle is if P of A, where P is some open sentence, uh, open uh, sentence that is true when you plug in A, okay? If P of A is true and P of K being true for some integer k equal to or greater than a. By the way, I should have said that a is an integer as well. I'll go back and add that in in a minute. Okay, so if p of a is true, and p of k being true for some integer k equal to or greater than a leads to p of k plus 1 being true, then P of n is true for all integers n starting with a. That's the principle of mathematical induction. Okay, so I want to go back and add up there that a is in fact an integer. I didn't say that. So let me say if P of A is true for some integer A comma and P of K being true for some integer K equal to or greater than A leads to P of K plus 1 being true then p of n is true for all integers n equal to or greater than a. So we looked at that a couple of lectures ago, and that's called the principle of mathematical induction. Okay. Then we used that to do what are called proofs by induction. So let's go over that and how did that work. Proof by induction. Okay, so we've done several examples of this. To prove P of N is true. for all integers n equal to or greater than a, where a 
is a fixed integer, comma, we dot dot dot. And now let's write down how it was that we were doing that. Okay, so number one, we show that P of A is true. And that is what we called the base case. And then we said, suppose P of K is true for some integer k equal to or greater than a. And that was called the inductive hypothesis. And then we show that p of k plus 1 must be true. And that would be the end of the proof then. That is a classical description of proof by induction right there. Okay, now the thing about proof by induction is sometimes it's not strong enough. Sometimes it won't do what you need it to do. I want you to think of proof by induction as sitting up, setting up a bunch of dominoes in a row and then you want to uh, make them fall down. Okay, so what do you do? You push over only the first domino, right? That's your base case, pushing over the first domino. And then the induction is the fact that each domino knocks down the next one. Okay? If the kth domino falls, then the k plus 1 domino will fall. So once again, how many dominoes do you have to manually push over in order to start the chain reaction? You only have to manually push over the first one. Okay, that's induction. Now, what if that's not enough? What if the dominoes got bigger and bigger as the line went along? So that maybe it's not good enough for you to just push over the first domino. Now here's where the analogy kind of falls apart a little bit, but just follow with me. What if there was a situation though where you said, okay, if I push over all of the dominoes up until this point, then all of them together will knock over the next domino. Instead of saying each domino individually knocks over the next domino, what if you said all of the previous dominoes cumulatively knocks over the next domino? Then you would still be able to have all the dominoes fall down, right? So that is analogous to a situation that we call strong induction. Let's, let's juxtapose these things. Let's draw a line here and let's do strong induction on the other side. Okay, so I'm going to write principle of strong induction. Okay, so that looks like this. Instead of just starting with one case being true, we're going to start with the possibility of multiple cases being true. Okay, and that multiple cases 
could in, so, in some instances be just one, or it might be, you know, 25, okay? Any number, all right? So that's how we're going to start. We're going to say, hang on here. So if keeps moving. If P of A and P of A plus 1 and P of A plus 2 and so on and so on up until P of let's say up until B okay if those are all true and i'm going to shorten this by the way we're going to talk about what's an easier way of saying this okay but let's write it like this first if those are true for some integers A and B where B is equal to or greater than A comma and so this is like our base case okay it's just that there's multiple base cases okay now, is there an easier way of saying that rather than writing P of A and P of A plus 1 and P of A plus 2? Yeah, there's an easier way of writing that. Let me, let me clean this up and make it more efficient. Okay, I'll say if P of N is true for all integers n equal to or greater than a and equal to or less than b. So that would be from a up until b. If p of n is true for all integers from a up until b, where A and B are integers. That's a much easier way of saying what I had said before. Okay. And now here, instead of saying P of K causes P of K plus 1, we are going to say all of the previous ones cause the next one. So we're going to say and P of K being true No, hang on. I'm sorry. I should word it a little bit differently. Let me start this part over again. I need to say and for any integer k bigger than or equal to b, if, now here's our, our strong inductive step, if p of i is true for all integers i from a to k leads to P 
of k plus 1 being true, comma, then p of n is true for all n. For all integers n greater than or equal to a. Okay, it's a little bit different, isn't it? And it's a little bit harder to follow. It's more wording there. But let me summarize it for you, okay? Regular induction says there's a single base case, and each case that's true causes the next case to be true. Okay, let me repeat that. I'll say it slightly differently if you want. There's a single base case, and each subsequent case will be true if the previous case was true. Okay, that's induction. Strong induction is where there may be multiple base cases and each subsequent case will be true if all of the previous cases were true. Okay, so each domino doesn't just get knocked down by the one domino before it. Each domino gets knocked down by all of the dominoes before it. Okay, so if you were going to do a proof by strong induction, Let's, let's make an outline of what that must look like, and then we'll practice it. Okay. So to prove... P of n is true for all integers n equal to or greater than a, where a is a fixed integer. Okay, so what we do is we show that the first one or two or three, it depends on how many we need to go, okay, but we show that the first several cases are true. It might just be one or it might be several, okay? So we start off by, by show that and I'm going to go ahead and write p of a comma and this time I will leave it this way p of a plus one comma dot 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 p of b okay show that those are true it's plural here because there's more than one okay for here, let's say instead of four, let's say where B is something equal to or greater than A. Okay. And then you, that those are our base cases. And then here's our inductive hypothesis. You suppose for some K, I should say the word integer here, for some integer K equal to or greater than B, you suppose that P 
e of a all of the way up to p of k are true. And then you show that p of k plus 1 must be true. Okay, so let's try this so you can see how we uh, are using the multiple previous cases, okay? We'll do two examples. So here will be our first example. Suppose you have um, a sequence of numbers given to you like this. Let's start with S0. Let's say that is 0. And S1 is 4. Okay, and then SK equals six times S K minus one minus five times S K minus two for any integer k equal to or greater than 2. Okay, let's write out that list of numbers. What would it look like? It would look like, well, they're telling us the first number would be 0 and the second number would be 4. What would the third number look like? It would be 6 times 4 minus 5 times 0, right? 6 times 4 minus 5 times 0. So what is that? That is 24. What would the next number look like? It would be 6 times this minus 5 times that. So 6 times 24, which is 144 minus 5 times 4, which is 20, 144 minus 20, you get 124, right? What would the next number look like? It would be 6 times this minus 5 times that. So what would that give us? It looks to me like 744 minus 120, which would be 724. I will check that arithmetic though and make sure that I was right because I just did it in my head. And I was very close, um, but that first number should have been a 600, not a 700. Okay, and so we would just keep following that pattern. To find the subsequent numbers, we would just keep doing 6 times the previous number minus 5 times the number before that. Okay? All right, now, here's what we're going to try to prove. We are going to try to prove that we could also have used the formula Sn equals 5n, I mean 5 to the power n minus 1. Okay, so prove that Sn is the same as 5 to the n minus 1. Okay, for any integer n equal to or greater than 0. 
that's our A right there. Is zero. Okay. So now to give you an idea of, we're going to do this by strong induction. Let me give you an idea of why we're going to need strong induction. Regular induction won't work. The reason why, this is just a preview, the reason why is because regular induction says that to make one domino fall, it just has to be hit by the previous domino, right? The reason why we aren't going to be able to make that work out here is because, look at this part right here. Each number is affected by more than the number right before it. In this case, each number is affected by the two previous numbers. So I, I can't say if I know one number, then I can figure out the next number. Because I need to know the number before the previous number as well. And in order to know that, I would have to know what became came before it, and so on and so on. Okay, so that's why regular induction won't work. So here's what we're going to do. We are, in this particular case, we're going to have two base cases. All right, let's, let's underline this. Let's label that as P of N. Okay, so our base cases in this example, let me go ahead and label this. Base cases. So that's going to be P of 0 and P of 1. We need to show that those are true. We're going to do that manually. Okay, so notice that S0 equals 0 because we were told that right here. Okay. I would like to show that that is the same as 5 to the 0 minus 1. Well, it is because 0 is equal to 1 minus 1, which is 5 to the 0 minus 1, right? Notice again, I'll, I'll say this again, I did not do this. I did not write here, I'll just erase it. What if I had written it like this? What if I said, notice S0 equals 0, and then um, under that, what if I wrote 0 equals 1 minus 1, and then 0 equals 5 to the 0 minus 1? Would that be a correct way to write a logical proof? No, it's not. That's an okay way to do your scratch work to figure it out. And then I get the idea that I say, okay, S0 is equal to 0. And then I write that as 1 minus 1. And then that will get me to 5 to the 0 minus 1. And then I follow this pattern. I can write that scratch work down for me to figure that out. But then in my proof, I need to write that. OK? We don't write the proof the same way we figure out scratch work. If you did, then the scratch work would be the proof. And so you wouldn't be a need to write out a proof. You would just say, here's a bunch of scratch work. OK, so we say, notice that S0 equals 0 which equals 1 minus 1, which equals 5 to the power 0 minus 1. So there we go. That's our first base case. P of 0 is true. OK. And then our second base case. Let's begin with the word also. 
And now S1, what did they tell us that is? They told us that's 4. I would like to for that to equal 5 to the 1 minus 1. Does it? Sure, because 4 is equal to 5 minus 1, which is 5 to the power 1 minus 1. So there we showed that P of 1 is true. Those are our two base cases in, in this proof. Okay, then we have our inductive hypothesis. By the way, Yeah, sorry, I'm misspelling that. That's why I stopped talking, because I got myself confused. And I got myself confused because I was misspelling that word. Okay, inductive hypothesis. Okay, so by the way, uh, I pointed out that in this example, A is the number 0. Can you figure out what B is? Think about it. In this case, B is the number 1, okay, because that was our last base case. Our first base case was P of 0, so A is 0, and our last base case is P of 1, so B is 1. So our inductive hypothesis should be worded like this. Suppose that... For some integer k, equal to or greater than 1, p of, let's just say i, is true. for all integers i from a to k. Or if you prefer, I'll leave this up to you, instead of writing that second part like that, you could say, suppose p of, oh, and I'm sorry, a is 0 in this case. I should have wrote 0 up to k. So you could write, instead of saying p of i is true for all integers i from 0 to k, if you prefer, you can manually write out p of 0, comma, p of 1, comma, dot, 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 comma, p of k are true. You don't even have to put the p of 1 because it's just the next one after p of 0. So you can write p of 0, dot, 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 p of k are true. If you prefer that, that's okay with me. Okay, but it's important to say that they're all true, starting with 0 up to k, p of 0 up to p of k. All right, that's important. That's your inductive hypothesis. And then the only thing left is for you to manually show that P of K is true. Okay, that's what we have to do manually here is show P of K is true. All right, so let's figure out how we're going to do that. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to say P of K, I meant to say P of K plus 1. Let me write that neater. We already have part of our assumption is that P of K is true. Our assumption goes all the way up to P of K. So we need to show that P of K plus 1 is true. Okay.
how we're going to do that. We write then s k plus 1 would equal, what would it equal? Well, here's our formula given to us right here. So it would equal 6 s, what comes right before k plus 1 is k, right? And then minus 5 times s, what comes right before k? k minus 1. Now, because these are equal to or less than k, then part of my hypothesis tells me, my inductive hypothesis tells me that I can replace them with the other formula. What I mean is I can write which equals 6 times, and I can replace sk with 5 to the power k minus 1, and then minus 5 times, and I can replace sk minus 1 with 5 to the power k minus 1 minus 1. I can do those two things because of the inductive hypothesis. Okay. All right, now let's just do some arithmetic. Let's distribute that 6. We'll get 6 times 5 to the k minus 6. Let's distribute the negative 5. We'll get minus 5 times 5 to the k minus 1 gives me 5 to the k, right? And then, um, and then we're going to have plus 5, right? Negative 5 times negative 1. Okay, let's just rearrange those and write it like this. 6 times 5 to the k minus 5 to the k, and then minus 6 plus 5. Doesn't that equal 5 to the... Here, let's write it like this. Doesn't that equal 5 times... 5 to the k minus 1. And isn't that 5 to the k plus 1 minus 1? So s to the k plus 1 equals 5 to the k plus 1 minus 1. That shows that p of k plus 1 is true. And that's the end of our proof. Okay, that's a proof by strong induction. And we needed strong induction because each new number required us to look back at two previous numbers, not just one. If you have to look back at any more than one, previous number, then you're using strong induction. And by the way, it's not, it's, it's not just a coincidence either. The fact that we had to look back at two previous numbers is actually related to the same reason of why there were two base cases. It takes two things in order to get the ball rolling. Okay, let's see where we are on time. I said we would do two examples, but it's already been 40 minutes, and I think that this was a really good example. I would actually kind of just prefer to leave it at that. So why don't we do that? Because this is the better of the two examples I was going to show you. So I think let's leave it at this.